SpaceX never fails to surprise us. Just when we think they've run out of new ideas, they come up with something innovative again. This time, it's with their Falcon 9 recovery ships, known as drone ships. We all know that SpaceX uses a lot of water on the orbital launch mount for Starship launches. This system is called the Water Deluge System. The idea is simple. Flood the launch pad with water when the 33 engines fire up. The water helps cool down the pad and protects it from damage caused by heat and force. It's a smart idea for a launch pad, but no one expected SpaceX to use a similar system on their drone ships at sea. At first glance, it might seem unnecessary. SpaceX has been using these drone ships for years without any major problems. Plus, the drone ships are already in the ocean, surrounded by water. Why not just use seawater instead of spraying water onto the deck? To answer these questions, let's break down what the new system does, why it was introduced, and how it might work. The water deluge system is designed to protect the drone ship's deck during Falcon 9 booster landings. During the December 5th landing, footage showed water being sprayed onto the deck just before the booster touched down. This is the first time SpaceX has used a deluge system for booster landings on a drone ship. The idea is similar to the system used for Starship's launch pad. When a rocket fires its engines, the extreme heat and force can damage the surface underneath. The water helps absorb the heat and reduce the impact. It also helps lower the noise produced by the engines, which can reach up to 180 decibels. Without this protection, repeated landings can wear out the drone ship's deck. Why did SpaceX decide to add this system now, after more than a decade of Falcon 9 launches and over 300 successful landings? There are a few possible reasons. Over time, the repeated landings of Falcon 9 boosters may have caused damage to the drone ship decks. The heat and force from the engines can erode the metal surface. Adding a water deluge system helps reduce this damage and extends the life of the drone ships. SpaceX is launching more rockets than ever before. As the number of launches increases, the drone ships need to stay in good condition. The water deluge system helps keep them operational for longer. SpaceX might be planning to increase the power or weight of Falcon 9 boosters. This could create more heat and force during landings, making extra protection necessary. One big question is what type of water SpaceX is using. Since the drone ships are in the ocean, it seems logical to use seawater. However, seawater can cause corrosion over time. The salt in seawater can damage metal surfaces and the rocket engines. On the other hand, SpaceX's Merlin engines are made from stainless steel, which is resistant to rust. Some people think the drone ships might have onboard tanks for fresh water. These tanks could be filled up each time the ship returns to port. Fresh water would be better for preventing corrosion. The tanks could also be used for firefighting, providing an extra safety measure. The mission in which SpaceX used this water system for the first time was also very important. It marked the 100th successful landing on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship. Overall, it was SpaceX's 380th successful booster recovery. The booster used for this mission had flown 19 times. The current record for a Falcon 9 booster is 24 flights. Reusing boosters helps SpaceX save money and makes rocket launches more affordable for customers like NASA and other companies. Estimates suggest that SpaceX saves around 40 to 50 million dollars each time they recover and reuse a Falcon 9 booster. Building a new booster costs about 62 million dollars, while refurbishing a used one costs significantly less. By recovering 380 boosters so far, SpaceX has potentially saved between 15 and 19 billion dollars in total. These savings are a major reason why SpaceX can offer more competitive launch prices compared to other companies. SpaceX operates three drone ships. Of course, I still love you. Just read the instructions. And a shortfall of Gravitas. Two of these are based in Florida for launches from the Kennedy Space Center. And one is based in California for launches from Vandenberg Space Force Base. Recently, SpaceX achieved another significant milestone by completing its 400th launch. SpaceX has been rapidly increasing its launch cadence over the past few years. In 2021, the company conducted 33 launches. This number nearly doubled in 2022, with 60 launches. 
The trend continued in 2023 as SpaceX achieved 96 launches, accounting for 43% of all global launches that year. As of December 11, 2024, SpaceX has successfully launched 106 Falcon 9 rockets, with 24 more launches planned by the end of the year. If this trend continues, 2025 could see even more launches, potentially exceeding 150 missions. These launches might just seem like numbers, but when compared to their competitors, SpaceX's achievement stands out significantly. Blue Origin, often considered SpaceX's biggest competitor, has launched far fewer rockets. In 2021, Blue Origin completed only three launches. In 2022, that number increased slightly to five launches. In 2023, Blue Origin managed just two launches, primarily focused on suborbital missions with its new Shepard rocket. This is a stark contrast to SpaceX's consistent ability to launch rockets on a near-weekly basis. The global launch total in 2023 was about 200 launches, which means SpaceX alone was responsible for almost half of all the orbital launches that year. Despite the Falcon 9's success, SpaceX is focusing its future on Starship, the largest rocket ever built. Musk envisions launching up to 1,000 starships per year to support plans for colonizing the Moon and Mars. To date, SpaceX has conducted six Starship test flights. The fifth flight, in particular, captured global attention when the Super Heavy booster was successfully caught mid-air by the launch tower's mechanical arms during its return, a first in rocketry. SpaceX is already making the preparations for Flight 7 of Starship, scheduled for January 11, 2025. This test flight will use Booster 14 and Ship 33, marking the debut of the upgraded Block 2 upper stage. The flight is planned to launch from SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas. The Super Heavy booster will perform a controlled return to the launch site, while Ship 33 is expected to reach suborbital space, re-enter Earth's atmosphere, and splash down in the Indian Ocean. The mission's goal is to test the performance of the Block 2 design and gather data on re-entry dynamics. To prepare for this flight, SpaceX has already moved Booster 14 to the launch pad at Starbase for pre-flight testing. This includes cryogenic proof tests and static fire trials to verify the structural integrity and performance of the engines. Ship 33 has also undergone cryogenic testing to ensure it is ready for flight. These tests are essential to confirm that both the booster and the ship can handle the conditions of launch and re-entry. The Block 2 design being tested introduces several improvements, including redesigned forward flaps, larger propellant tanks, and an upgraded thermal protection system. These changes are intended to make the vehicle more reliable and reusable, supporting SpaceX's goal of rapid turnaround between flights. After the success of Flight 7, SpaceX plans to attempt a tower catch of the Starship upper stage in future missions. This step is crucial for achieving full reusability of the vehicle. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.